Chest, Pew. We've got the doubloons! Don't give them to the devil! It's the map we want. Is that chest lined? Huh? Aye. And lead me to it. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. Knife! Get a knife! Knife! Get a knife! Oh, I'd shiver my soul if I had eyes! came in, the balloons scattered all over the bed. And Bill was overhauled. The innkeepers. That boy. I knew he was up to something when I grabbed him. Hold on, mate. That door we come through were bolted on the inside, wasn't it? Aye. Aye. Well, that means they're still inside the inn. Scatter, lads. Yeah. And yeah. fight them. Yeah. Race them out. And don't you have a leg. You have your hands on thousands. Oh, yes. oh. Oh. You're safe now. Safe. <laughs> We're glad to see you. My father's dead soon. What do you mean? They killed him? No. No, they didn't kill him. At least not in that way. Well, thank you, Jim, for coming to tell us. Yes, thank you, Jim. Joyce, I wish everyone was as lucid as you are. <laughs> now, off to the kitchen. Uh, Joyce, get him some supper, will you? Oh, Squire, my mother will be alone. No, no, no. Me. I will see she's taken care of. Don't you worry. Mm -hmm. Thank you, sir. This way, my lad. By Joe, Lizzie. That was a deuce of Teddy told. 
You have heard of this Flint, I suppose. Heard of him? The bloodthirstiest buccaneer that ever sailed. Blackbeard was a child compared to Flint. The Spaniards lived in such fear of him that I tell you, sir, I was sometimes proud that he was an Englishman. <laughs> <laughs> yes, well, I've heard of him myself. The point is, had he gold? Gold? These villains cared for nothing but gold. It was their god. And they didn't stint in their worship. So, if this packet contained some clue as to where Flint buried his treasure, would that treasure amount to much? It would amount to this, sir. I would fit out a ship in Bristol, and we would have that treasure if we searched a year. Uh, the other corpse must have been Mr. Hawkins, then. He didn't have the map either. No, he's got a missus, isn't he? And a lad, was it you, sir, blood dog? Aye, ah, a sweet child he were, name of Jim. Now, yeah, well, few didn't think so. Thought he was up to something. Oh, uh, shameless. You won't do to this mishap. Tack back to Black Hill Cove. Get the lay of the land. Yeah, back we all go, says I, for the lad and the map. With your hurry, George, it's Providence what saved you from swinging on the end of a rope, not sense. How do we get the map, then? By waiting for Master Hawkins and his friends to give it us. <laughs> <laughs> they just come alongside and say, Here, John, is this what you're wanting? And hand it over, pretty like. That's right, matey. That's what they'll do. Very soon, we'll have it all. A whole of Flint's treasure. And this one of you swabs does something foolish, that is. Well, I think it's for Jim to break the seal. Yeah. It's a map. Map of an island, look. Bought your treasure here. And point us, tall trees, pie glass shoulder, bearing a point to north and north or east. Skeleton island, east, south, east, and a half east. Ten feet, longitude and latitude. The island where Flint's treasure is hidden. <laughs> I shall go to Bristol, and I shall get the best ship there is. No, squire, you'll do nothing of the sort. And why not pray? Because this belongs to Jim. The captain entrusted it to Jim. No, sir, I took it. But, but the captain warned you that pirates were after the map and told you to fetch help if they went to the inn. No, Jim, the map is yours. And pray what will you do with it, sir? Put it in safekeeping until you're old enough to seek the treasure yourself? Or will you set out upon the voyage now? I couldn't do that. How could I? Well, you leave the details with me, lad. Ship, crew, navigational brains. I will get the best set is in England. <laughs> and there's no difficulty in finding the spot, you know. And when we do, we'll all have money enough to roll in for the rest of our days. And you will be rich, Jim. And your good mother will be rich, too. And she'd be happy enough if father weren't dead. Well, your concern doesn't credit, Jim. It's no more than I'd expect from you. But it's only right you should go because of your father's involvement. All right, sir. Good. We're all agreed then? Yes, Squire. Splendid. Splendid. Now, Jim, you will be the cabin boy. And Livesey, you'll be the ship's doctor. And I, I will be the admiral. <laughs> and it will be the adventure of a lifetime. Hey, eh, Livesey? There's only one thing I'm afraid of. Or one man, I should say. Who, sir? Name the dog. You, sir? For you cannot hold your tongue. We're not the only ones who know of this map. There are desperate, wicked men who'd go to any lengths to get hold of it. That is right. I've seen two of them and heard others. Well, then we will take my men, Red Ruth, Joyce, and Hunter, with us. Stout fellows, all of them, who can be trusted. From first to last, we must none of us breathe a word of what we've found. Livesey, you are always in the right of it. And I will be as silent as the grave. <laughs> Hope I can go. <laughs> Hawkins? Oh. Good afternoon, Doctor. Oh. How are you getting on now? Oh, you see me as I am 24 hours a day, Doctor, slaving. Mm. I just don't know how I'll ever get things straight. It's so much work. Oh, I'm sure you will do. Uh, do sit down a moment, will you? Please. Please. 
We'll arrange for someone to come in and help you. Uh, an apprentice, perhaps. The squire and yourself have been too kind as it is. Oh. Mrs. Hawkins. Yes, Doctor. No doubt Jim has told you about the map he found in that ruffian's sea chest. The treasure map. Yes, he told me. Miss Squire Trelawney and I are determined to go after that treasure. I'm sure that's of no interest to me, Doctor, with my Daniel Adley cold in his grave because of it. But we'd like Jim to come with us. Do you believe I'd let you take Jim? But I hope you will. So that's why you've been so kind to me, Mother. That is not true. And Jim is perfectly entitled to go on this journey. On the same venture that cost his father's life. For that very reason. Surely it's only right the boy should take up the search where his father left off. Walk to in fear for his life? But this time the circumstances will be different. There'll be no pirates to cause trouble. And when we return, your fortune and futures will be amply assured. Isn't that last what Daniel was trying to do? Doctor's right, Mother. Oh, be quiet, Jim. I'll personally take full responsibility for his health and welfare. No harm will come to him. I give you my word. Mother, let me go, please. You want a ship, sir? Yes, a ship. Yes. Now, yes. sit you down, sir. Sit you down. Oh, oh thank you. Yes, uh, what uh, manner of ship, sir, and for what purpose? Now, that I am not at liberty to divulge. Ah. You will uh, take a glass of sherry? Thank you. Pleasure. A uh, great number of different craft to float, Squire. Unless I know something of your purpose. Now, how can I be of service? Ah, now, there you are in the right of it, of course. Well, she must be stout enough to weather an ocean storm. And uh, what cargo will she carry? Thank you. Now, why do you wish to know that? To determine the size and nature of the hold required. For example, uh, will the goods be perishable? Oh, 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 in no way, sir. Oh, no, no. No, they'll endure to the end of time. Your and, hotel, uh, sir. and yours, Squire. No, no, the hole need not be large, but one must be able to secure it from both without and within. And uh, how many of you be taking passage? Uh, my party will be five. And a boy. Yes. Uh, two of us, the uh, ship's doctor and myself, will naturally require separate accommodation. Uh, and your sailing master, he'll require his own cabin? Who? Your sailing master. Oh, yes. Yeah. Ah, uh, that makes a minimum of three to four cabins. And suitable dining accommodation, of course. Of course, yes. Well, now, there is a ship on my books. Squire, a schooner, 200 tons, I believe, would serve your purpose handsomely. Ah, yes. Proper perfect, I'd say. <laughs> the Hispaniola. It is prophetic, Landley. Prophetic. The Hispaniola sailing back to the Spanish maid. Uh, no argument now. She must be mine. <laughs> now show me the corners. There's Squire. <sighs> Splendid. <laughs> Splendid. <laughs> I'm sure that for the ship such as this ship, boy, she's the Caribbean will be a successful one. Oh, yes, yes, yes. By Jove, by Jove. Oh, by Jove, yes. Oh, oh yes, yes. So, who told you that this is where we were bound for? Why, you did, Squire. The Hispaniola returning to the Spanish main, we were words, as I recall. Well, I trust that you will treat his information as confidential. The nature of our venture, you know, of course, with the utmost secrecy. Oh, my client's interests me only concern, sir. Good. <laughs> and so it should be. Thank you, sweetie, eh? Yes. Come on, remember? Known for the Caribbean on a secret voyage. His name's Trelawney, Squire Trelawney. How many in his party? Five. One's a boy. A boy? And what else did he impart? Oh, nothing of any account. He wants a sea cook of quality. I can't help him there. Sea cook, yes. Quality, no. Well, I'll put the word about, seeing as how I knows most. And he wants a tailor to make him a uniform. Do you name him one? No. I said I'd think about it. Send Mr. Patmore aboard. Patmore, but he's well known. Mm, for... At four bells. Forenoon watch tomorrow. Oh. <laughs> Patmore it is. 
But for these waters, I recommend a sturdier cloth, Squire. This one, braid and button, a uniform will cost, say, about 30 guineas. Oh, yes, well, we are bound for the tropics, you know. Oh, in that case, a lighter, more felicitous material like this, for example, more expensive, say, 40 guineas. Yes, now, is that strong enough to withstand the rigours of life afloat? If I may make so bold, apart from the act of keelhorning, I would say definitely yes. Oh, yes. Definitely yes. Yes. Come in. Uh, if you please, Squire, Seaman wishes a word with you. Oh? Name is Silver. Says on of a personal matter. Oh, well, let's see him. Show him in. Miss Silver, sir. Is it Squire Trelawney? I have the honour of addressing, sir. That is my name. <laughs> News travels fast along the waterfront, Squire, and the word was passed that you was in need of a good cook. That is so, my man. But begging your honour's pleasure, that was my duty aboard after I lost this in the service of my king and country, God bless his grace's majesty. Oh, God bless him indeed. See, and before <laughs> that, I was a quartermaster, stern but fair, so I can point my ropes as well as cook ash. Oh, well, and it was my own fare that I was thinking of, Mr Silver, as well as cruise, of course. And... Oh, God bless me, sir, I was old Admiral Lord Ox Cook. The immortal hawk. And a finer gentleman I've yet to meet, Your Honour. Leave these and call again tomorrow. At your service, Squire. Um, Eve too, Mr. Patmore. Uh, begging the Squire's pardon, did you happen to be discussing price with Mr. Patmore here? Well, yes, I was, but I... Did it a crave in your indulgence, Squire? Which and how much? Is that your business, Mr. Silver? As tailors come, Mr. Patmore, you knows the job well enough. Better than most, maybe. You have the reputation of charging more than the cloth and your needle's worth. As I was saying, Squire, which and how much? Well, now then. This at 30, and this at 40. Who take a little creature the likes of you for the rogue you are? 20 guineas to the every 30, the light, and not a farthing more, or I'll have one that ain't a rogue. But the prices are as Mr. Silver says, Squire. Well, you call again tomorrow when I've chosen the design. And you think yourself lucky that you still have the order. And thank you, Mr. Silver, for your good solicitation. But I can't abide seeing an honest man done down, Squire. Even though times is hard, that ain't no excuse. That's all right, all right, Hunter. Uh, <laughs> and um, where did you serve with uh, Lord Hawk? Oh, the West Indies Station, Squire. Or the Caribbean? <laughs> Where the viands aren't like what they are here, sir. Oh, <laughs> come away, oh, Long John, he'd say to me. Come away and make this hunk of Jamaican mutton as sweet-tasting as minted English lamb. <laughs> oh, them were the days, Squire. <laughs> and how long were you with him? Till we'd rid the main of pirates, Squire. They was everywhere. But no match for his lordship. He saw him off. All save one. Mm -hmm. A black-hearted villain name of Flint that slipped his cable for Savannah. Ah, yes, oh, yes. We came yes. home and with the few pennies I'd saved while at sea, thank merciful heavens, a pension being denied me. Denied? I... After all you've done and given for your country? An outrage, sir, I say. Oh, there's fair weather and foul in every man's life, squire. Anyways, I set myself with a small inn here in Bristol where God-fearing seafarers can spin a yarn in the company of their own. But, you know, I need to go to sea again. But why, when you're already established doing valuable work here? Oh, it's my health, sir. Ah. I need the salt air in my lungs and not the fumes of a backy-filled parlour, no matter how friendly. And that's why I come to see you, Squire, to ask you, nay, to beg you for this berth aboard. Please. And so you shall have it. Or my name is not John Trelawney. <laughs> and I warrant you, ere long there will be a surprise in it for you. So you just be patient, mateys. Rest on your oars till I make myself snug, a ship's cook, and I'll get you all signed on one by one. You make sure you do just that. Hey, mateys? You don't trust nobody, do you, George? But you can trust me. Always. You put your trust in Long John Silver. It seems safe to a snug harbor. <laughs> <laughs> I'm told you want to see me, Silver. Damn you. Joshua! What have you got in mind to do with me now? As if you haven't done enough already. Because of you, I lost my situation. That's why I sent for you, my old shipmate, to offer you a better situation. What? When the calls for a man of your special abilities. Yeah, what is it? Why don't you sit down and have a grog? I'll tell you later. Now, come on, sit down. That. Louise up! Fetch our good shipmate here, grog.
Now listen, before we set sail, we'll need arms aboard. Pistols close by and muskets tucked away. Pistols aboard is easy enough, but muskets will be harder. Not when the mate's standing his watch, it won't be. What do you mean, mate? Arrow? Well, who better? One night when he has the deck, I'll wave the grog bottle under his nose till he don't know what day it is. If he were boy a 36-pounder, he wouldn't notice it. Who's the <laughs> sailing master, Long John? The best that could be found, one that lay a course true and take us safe to our destination. And once there, we finish him with the rest. Is that you being in a hurry again, George? No one will move against him till I give the word, because aboard the Hispaniola, it'll be Captain Silver who'll be in command. And don't none of you swaps forget it. Well, that would be very, very nice. And there's the matter of the sailing master still to be resolved, Squire. Indeed, yes, yes. Had you anyone in mind? It has man? come to my attention that Captain Smollett is seeking a command. Yes. Smollett? Oh, what manner of man is he? By reputation, highly regarded, sir. Yes, yes, come in, yes. Oh, beg pardon for interrupting, Squire, but will Mr. Blandley be dining with you, sir? No, no, I fear I cannot. I have another appointment. Very good, sir. Uh, Silver. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, what do you know of a Captain Smollett? Smollett, sir? I'm thinking of engaging him as sailing master. Oh, <laughs> it's not my place to comment on the merits of an officer, Squire. Oh, come now, you found me Mr. Arrow as mate. A sailing master's different, Squire. He's in yes. command. Simple sea cook like myself has no right passing opinions on gentlemen of rank. Yes, all right. All right, thank you. Thank you, sir. Aye, sir. <laughs> uh, yes, sir. You know, what a treasure that man is, you know. I thought myself lucky to have found a good cook, but more than that, you know, I found myself a good crew. Within a matter of days, he had assembled a company of the toughest old sorts imaginable. <laughs> <laughs> Not pretty to look at, mark you, but men of indomitable spirit. <laughs> I swear we could fight a frigate. <laughs> yes, well, uh, you uh, you send along, Captain Smollett. Oh, I'll yes. have a word with the yes, Captain Smollett. Well, I think you've done very well, really. That's very well indeed, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I'll let you. Yes, I'll wear this one when I take the Sunday service. I'm still not sure I'm doing the right thing, letting you I'll go. be safe, Mother. It's the way you have of getting into mischief that troubles me. I promise to be good honest, I do. How many times have I heard that and seen the pickle you've made of it within the hour? They're waiting for me. And I'm to do without you. Dr. Livesey's found to hope for you here. You won't have much to do. That's not what I meant, son. Well, off you go. May God bring you safely home. Aye, with a fortune for us, eh? I'd be well content to have my son back. Well, you know, not only did Silver provide me handsomely with a crew, but he got rid of two out of the six I had already engaged. He showed me in the moment that they were just the sort of freshwater swabs to be avoided in a venture of this importance. He knows the purpose of our voyage. Well, in the most general terms, yes. What will we be looking for? But Lipsy. He served with Lord Hawk, you know, chasing Flint now. Never fear, I have not been indiscreet. Long John is a man of character. Yes? <coughs> Excuse me, Squire. Uh, if you please, the Captain Smollett wishes a word. Well, I'm always at the Captain's orders. Show him in. Yes, Squire. Captain Smollett, sir. <coughs> uh, Captain Smollett, may I present um, Dr. Libsey? Yes, certain, sir. Captain Smollett. You will have a glass of port. Thank you, no, sir. <laughs> well, all is well, I hope. <laughs> All shipshape and seaworthy. Let us speak plain, I believe, even at the risk of offence. I don't like this cruise, I don't like the men, and I don't like my officer. Oh. Wow, <laughs> that's short and sweet. Oh, well, perhaps, sir, uh, you do not like your ship. I can't speak as to that, sir, not having seen her tried. She seems a clever craft. Oh, well, impossibly, sir. You do not like your employer, either. Stay a bit, stay a bit. Captain Smollett, you say you don't like this cruise. Now, why? I was engaged, sir, on sealed orders to sail this ship for that gentleman where he should bid me. So far, so good. Now, I find that every man before the mast knows more than I do. Is that fair? No, it's not. Next, I learn we're going after treasure. Yes, from my own hands, I hear it. Now, treasure's ticklish work. I don't like treasure voyages on any account. And a secret voyage that's been blabbed? Means life or death in a close run. Well, that's very likely true. Though we're not quite so ignorant as you seem to imply, Captain. Next, you say you don't like the crew. Are they not good seamen? I don't like them, sir. And I think as sailing master, I have the right to choose my own crew. Oh, well, perhaps so. My friend perhaps should have taken you with him, but the slight, if there was one, was unintentional. 
And you don't like Mr. Arrow? I don't, sir. I believe he's a good seaman, but he's too free with a crew to be a good officer, too familiar. Well, now, the long and the short of it, Captain. What do you want? You're determined to go on this voyage like iron. Then take precautions. You're loading powder and arms tomorrow. Don't put him in the forehold. Aft. Under here. She is big, Mr. Redruth. She'd have to be to take us all that way. Squire says we're going half around the world. I hear there's a map with crosses on it to show where treasure is, and that, I hear, is the longitude and latitude of the island. Lizzie, I did not tell a soul. Well, the hands know it's so. Well, I didn't tell them, Lizzie. I, someone else would have done it, but not me. Well, it doesn't matter much now who did it. Tell me, Captain, does what you said mean you fear a mutiny? <laughs> That's putting words into my mouth. If I believed that, I'd not be justified in putting to sea. Ah. I think things are not going right, and I'm asking you to take precautions or let me resign. That's all. Well, I staked my wig. You meant to say more than that when you came in. <laughs> You're smart, Doctor. I meant to be discharged. I never thought Mr. Trelawney would hear a word. Nor would I. I would have seen you to the deuce had Lindsay not been here. But I have heard you, and I will do what you want. But I think the worst of you for it. That's as you please, sir. You'll find I do my duty. Tolerable humbug. I declare I think his conduct unmanly, unsailorly, and downright un-English. You're the same as Hunter and Joyce, aren't you? The same? You climb that ladder like a gamekeeper. I'm from the squire's estate. I'm Jim Hawkins. I'm to be cabin boy. Aye. I'm mate aboard. You can call me Mr. Arrow. Now come along, I'll take you aft. Do. Come in. Jim! <laughs> Ship's company complete, Lizzie. Welcome aboard, my boy. When do we sail, Squire? Next tide. Excited, are you? Oh, yes, sir. I dredged a treasure island day and night. Explored every acre of it. We fought off fierce savages and been set <laughs> upon by wild animals. Well, I trust it won't be quite like that, Jim. I'm hoping we just row ashore, find Flint's treasure, get it on board, and set sail for home. Etch a lot. Oh, I don't know. We might encounter a snag or two. <laughs> it might well turn out to be the great adventure of Jim's dreams, eh? <laughs> well, now. Seeing that we've got a cabin boy aboard, he might as just well be about his duty. Sir. Now then, take this note here to the Spyglass Inn and hand it to Mr. Long John Silver. Yes, sir. Right. I'm going to miss my journey, my big man. Uh, it'll not be for long, my dove. When you sell the Spyglass, at least goodwill and rigging, you take passage with Jamaica, birth with your kin till I join you there. Take care of yourself, you know, because you're such a dear man to me. Others may get caught in a cannon's way, but John Silver knows how and when to tack and duck, so don't you worry none on that score. Oh! Silver, sir. That's right, lad. That's my name. Who might you be? My name's Jim Hawkins, sir. This is from the squire. Oh, thank you, Master Hawkins. You must be the new cabin boy. Well, I'm pleased to meet you. Stop him, it's black dog. Well, don't get too cut to your ears and pay your score. And hurry, friend, run and catch him. If he had Mark himself, he should pay his score. Did you say he was? What, what? Doc, sir, has Mr. Squire told you about the pirates? He was one of them. One of them swabs? In my house? What's Squire Trelawney gonna think? You won't tell him, will you? No, sir. Oh, thank you, Jim. 
Ah, but a precious old sea calf I am. I've forgotten this. <laughs> All hands aboard. Duty is duty, messmates. Louisa, fetch my bag. Jim, you and I should get on well. You'll take that parrot aboard for me, will you? Yes, sir. <laughs> What's she called? Flynn. Captain Flynn, after the famous buccaneer. Ah! Handsomely for those powder cakes, Mr. Arrow. Aye, aye, Captain. Easy there. What is it, matey? What are you doing? What's going on? Your plans are starting to go wrong. We're still in a powder bath. Captain was orders. Hey, beg your pardon, Captain. If we waste time moving stories now, we'll miss the tide. I'll decide what's done in this ship, Silver, and when it's done. Get your galley. Aye, aye, Captain. Here you. Ship boy. Off with you to the cook and get some work. Yes, sir. I won't have favorites aboard my ship. Seeing as how we're going to be shipmates for a while, Jim, I think it's better if you call me Long John, just like all the others. Very well, sir. Long John? Yeah. And that bird is maybe 200 years old, Jim. Well, he lives forever, mostly. And if anybody's seen more wickedness, that must be the devil himself. How's that? Well, she's sailed with a great Captain England, the famous pirate. Oh, She's been in Madagascar, Suriname, Providence, and Portobello. <laughs> and when she says pieces of age, <laughs> it's because she's seen them. Ah, you've smelt powder, haven't you, Captain? Gladly there, Mr. Arrow, please. What love that? Stream, Captain, a double throttle run. If you insist, Squire. Well, I do. And you will drink a toast with Lucy and myself. Two, in fact. One to the land we are leaving, and another to the land we are bound for. <laughs> so, Jim. Excited. Oh, yes, sir. It's like a dream. I could reach him yesterday. Ah, well, we all have sweet tooth. Still, I reckon as we can spare you one. Thank you, Mr. Murray. You and me, Joshua, we understand, Grog. Hello. Hello. Mr. Arrow, 
Here comes Smollett. Oh. Turn hands too. The upper deck's a disgrace. See to the hands. Here. What about the decks? You're drunk, Mr. Hands. Captain, escort Mr. Arrow to his quarters. I'll deal with you later, sir. We've been tippling again, haven't we, Joshua? Come on. Mary, what are you doing here? Where's Mr. Anderson? I don't know, sir. The upper deck's like a dockyard. Turn to and swab down. Me, sir? I'm just off watch. For general duties, the entire ship's company stands permanent watch. Now be about it. Aye, sir. And Mary, I'll not tolerate insolence. Aye, oh, Captain. When are we going to move against him, John? When I gives the word. Ten days I've been taking orders from Miss Smollett. Do this, do that, look alike. I'm going to put his eyes out. And you'll be taking his orders and doing your duty for a lot more than ten days to come. Now, just be rid of him, John, I say. Ah, oh, is that my galley, mate? You come and fetch the squire's supper, Jim? If he's ready, Long John. Yeah, there's Jim, piping hot and tasty with it. Thank you, Long John. Have a bit of side with them all. And all navigate, George. Will you make a land fall on Flint's Island? Or Joe Banderson or Israel Hands? And not I. You made it to that. We have a snug berth aboard. Good grub. Grog when we want it, as our mate will tell you. There's even apples for the taking. No, George. But let Smollett take us there. What happens after he does is for me to decide. No, the, the man's a drunk. I shall replace him as mate. The boatswain Anderson seems the likeliest candidate. He's good seaman. Ah, then my choice of ship and crew are not as ill-advised as you supposed. The ship, sir? She lies close to the wind as a man has a right to expect of his own married wife. As for the crew, they're, they're capable enough, but behind it all there's something brewing. I can smell it. Uh, you know, cause to remove me. Of course it weren't fair. Spend my life at sea. Mr. Arrow, ship's mate. That's the time. You work hard for that, Josh. Not the smell of cares. Care. None of them care. Waits till we put about. Then it'll be us with a fife and fiddle. And then what does the hangman's dance? Well, we're talking, George. Mutiny. Gold. Flint sword. You'll have your share, Josh. You'll have your share. The smaller. Trelawney, Livesey, the lad Orchids. What are you meaning, George? Well, they ain't with us now, are they? What are you going to do with them? Chuck them over the side. Kill them? You'd have done it long ago. Silver let us. I'll not be a party of killing. No, not to that oh, world. Josh! Yeah. Hello! Sound the alarm! Josh! Pirates! You yeah. mutiny! Hello! Sound the alarm! Hello! Hello! Pirates! Mutiny! Overboard! Man overboard! What is it? What's wrong? Mr. Arrow, Captain, he just fell overboard. What? How did it happen? He sank like a stone, sir. 
Carrying too much ballast as usual, I suppose. Fearful drunk he was. I did my best to catch him, but without my leg, I'm not as nippy as I was. Enter it in the log, Mr. Anderson. I can. He saved me the trouble of putting him in irons. Oh, he'd be happier where he's gone, sir. Sitting in one of them seats of glory we all hopes to be occupying one day. Hmm. Before dawn. But have you told the others? No, not yet. Gray's on the lookout, and you had a word with it. Maybe the weather I off and on like a blessed bombo forever? I tell you when. The squire or the doctor has that map. Let them find the treasure and help us to fetch it aboard. That's when. I just saw it smell it navigate us halfway back for I struck. But I know the sort you are, so we'll finish with them on the island as soon as the stuff's on board. Now, pity it is. But you're never happy till you're drunk. I'll split my sight of a sick heart to save with the likes of you. Easy, John. No one's crossing you. Is with us then. Tom and Anna are against us. Gray can't make up his mind. I like Tom. I'll have a word with him. What about the others? Captain, the doctor, the squire. What do you think? Put them ashore, like maroons. That were Captain England's way. Or cut them down like pork. That were Flint, so Billy Bones' way. Dead men don't bite, that's what he said. Where is Creed, like? What's your creed, John Silver? You know me for an easy man, don't you, Israel? Quite the gentleman, hmm? But well, this time it's serious. When I'm in Parliament, riding in my carriage, I don't want none of them sea lawyers in the cabin below coming home unlooked for, like the devil at prayers. My vote is death. John, you're a man. Aye. Now, if you'll be a sweet lad, get me an apple to wet my pipe like. Aye. You stole that bill, John. You were all sucking that bill. Have a go at the rum. I said as I wanted an apple, Israel. Grog's a stuff for men, not apples. All right. If you want a plight to don't ship me, I shall have to get one myself then. Not now, boy, not now. Doctor. In a moment, Jim. Chart, like it, chart. One in the center. Spyglass in. Doctor, I must talk to you. I said Peter you... Hawkins. Has any man of you ever seen that island ahead? I have, sir. I wanted there once with the trader I was cooking. I have a chart off. Come with me. Aye, sir. Is that the place? This is the very place. Yes, Captain. Very prettily drawn out, too. Oh, aye, this is the spot Captain Flint's anchoring. And if you was intending to enter to careen the old sir, there's the best spot in all these waters, Captain. Thank you, Silver. I'll ask you later on to give us a help. Here we go. Aye, aye, Captain. And a double grog for all hands long drawn. Oh, thank ye, Squire. We we'll think you're good health. And these are the two gentlemen. <laughs> oh, it's a sweet spot for a lad to go ashore on, Jim. Now then, Captain, you will join us in a glass for our safe arrival. Squire, listen, please. They're pirates and they mean to murder us all. I heard them say it.
Mr. Anderson. Have awnings rigged forward for shade. Aye, aye, Captain. I gave them an order. I doubt it will be carried out. I'd be obliged if you'd charge these and carry one about your person at all times. You three, station yourselves outside in the passage. Go on, do as the captain says. Well, Captain, what's to be done? That's the problem, Squire. To remain idle will only give them more time to prepare their attack on us. And one more order from me will bring the ship about our ears. And now, just to show our arch is in the right place, we'll drink a toast to Captain Smollett. Damn Smollett. He's aged me long enough. I want to get in their cabin, I do. I want their wines and pickles and such. <laughs> George, your head ain't much account, nor never was. But you can hear all right, I reckon. At least raise your ears is big enough. You speak soft, and you'll keep sober till I give the word. Wait, is what I say. But when the time comes, let her rip. going out there, Captain? I must, if we're to learn what's happening. Oh, well, then, I, I, I will come with you. No, Squire, I think not. It's better you gentlemen remain here. We mustn't arouse suspicion. Look lively, lads. Smollett wants the awnings rigged. <laughs> he can rig them himself, eh, mates? Seeing as he ain't our captain anymore. That's no way to be talking to your superior officer in the execution of his duty, George. Duty is duty. So just you get up on your feet and start doing it. All of you. are rigged, a grog, fresh water and fruit for all hands. That's very spirited of you, Captain. Mr. Anderson, the general make and mend this afternoon. Aye, aye, Captain. Uh, begging your pardon, Captain, uh, the turn ashore wouldn't come amiss, if you've no objection. None at all, Silver. Many as please may go. I'll fire a gun half an hour before sundown. Now you, Captain. Do you hear that, mateys? We're going ashore! What's to do, Captain? I want to know how many are going. Aye, right, Captain. He's taking him ashore. Silver? Yes. It would seem he's not quite ready to give the signal to mutiny. Oh, why is he hanging back? I think he wants to be absolutely sure before he acts who's for him and who isn't. I wouldn't think it'd take him long to settle that. Ah, well, we'll seize the ship. If they all go ashore. Silver won't be caught that way. He'll leave a party behind. Oh, we'll soon settle them. Of course we will. I think we should not underestimate Mr. Silver. Oh, damn Mr. Silver. He will not get the better of me. By God in England, he won't. He won't draw a He won't draw a draw We'll all go ashore. It ain't fair, John. We pick lots for who stays on boards, eh, mateys? George, your ears need washing out again, I reckon. I said I'll be detailing you off. That ain't fair, Long John. No matter if it ain't. I got good reasons. Six aboard, the rest on shore. Israel, you're in command here. Oh, belay that, John! Do it! I need someone I can trust on board to keep away the eye on them others. And Joe, we'll take some of our mates below and fetch up the shore-going gear. Aye, aye, Long John. And remember, 
Emma ain't with us. Ain't coming back. And that means old Tom. I don't know. Whatever you do, lad, try not to rouse them. No help in rubbing them up the wrong way. George. Tom. Listen, keep them well hidden until we're ashore. Man the long boats, mateys! When Alan gets ashore, you take care of him, lady. We will, John. Don't worry. I'll see you all to myself. Ah, right, sir. <laughs> ah, turn him ashore. Do us all a power of good, eh, Tom? The watch aboard is the coxswain and five hands. Very well, Mr. Anderson. Thank you. Aye, aye, Captain. Matched man for man, by Jove. And they're not aware that we know of their mutinous intent. You know, we could seize a ship, put to sea, and the first wind that blows up, we're off. Mm. Well, why not? No drinking water. Well, of course, couldn't be over that as far as Jamaica. No, sir, we couldn't. Even now, our supply is dangerously low. 